Tomboys and femboys, invented in 1789 when the people of France invented the concept of rebellion. Among these revolutionaries were men and women who told the monarchs to take their stereotypical gender norms and shove them down their now exposed neck holes. From late 18th century France up to modern day everywhere, the argument about which would make the superior significant other, a tomboy or a femboy, has been raging between people who never shut the fuck up about things no one cares about. And as a proud member of the spend an inordinate amount of time talking about shit that doesn't matter squad, I feel it's my duty to toss in my two cents on this topic. And just to be clear, of course, I'm taking this from a man's perspective. I would get a woman's opinion on the matter by asking a woman that I know, but uh... Yeah, anyway, if you have a complete lack of understanding when it comes to the English language, you may not know what the terms tomboy and femboy actually mean. And you're also probably very confused as to how you ended up here watching this video. A femboy is, and brace yourself, this may come as a shock to you, a feminine boy. That is a man who partakes in an extreme amount of feminine behavior, such as cooking, wearing thigh-high socks, expressing his love and appreciation for those around him, practicing personal hygiene, having hair that goes down past his chin. You know, things that have in the past often referred to as that gay shit. The term tomboy, on the other hand, is a half acronym, which stands for traditionally opposite of a man, boy. They can be pretty easily identified by wearing compression shorts and having the ability to beat the shit out of you. Coming into this video, you may think there's a very easy answer for you. I mean, if you're straight or gay, it's a one-step process to determine your choice. Really, only someone who's bi would have any internal conflict here, right? Right? What? I don't fucking know. This is your lesson, not mine. Wrong, dumbass. If things really were so simple, there wouldn't exist those who scoff at the idea of a straight man dating a tomboy or a gay man dating a femboy. You know, those who hear that you want to be with a woman who is athletic, doesn't wear makeup, calls you bro, and uh, does detective work. They'll be like, heh, sounds like you want a boyfriend with a vagina. Yes. Or they'll hear that you want a man who is clean-shaven from the nose down, wears makeup, constantly makes you listen to shit indie pop, and is a pretty good healer. Heh. <laughs> Sounds like you just want a girlfriend with a penis. Yes. Think about it. Is it really so simple that it just comes down to what kind of genitals you want to ram your genitals into? Or is your attraction to others built on a more complex set of preferences related to appearance, personality, general disposition, and so on? Actually, don't think about it. We can save the deep analysis of sexuality for another time. We have more pressing matters. Like, where in the wild do you even find tomboys or femboys? Think back to your high school days. Or, uh... Sorry, think back to your current high school days. Tomboys are all on the soccer team. Or maybe the basketball team, but you're not tall enough for them, so forget that one. Femboys, on the other hand, hang out in that corner with those kids. You know what I'm talking about. That corner with those kids. But with schools cancelled for the rest of time, you all have to learn how to extrapolate that knowledge from high school and apply it to the real world. Tomboys are pretty easy to find. Go to a local gym, a running track, you know, anywhere out in public where people get real sweaty. Smash tournaments not included, obviously. If you don't feel comfortable doing that, then just find an open field and throw out a bunch of soccer balls. A few should show up eventually. Femboys, on the other hand, are much harder to find out and about. Most are likely sitting at home talking on Discord. Kinda like you. Except they probably get paid for it. If you don't feel comfortable joining a Discord server full of 30-something year old men getting a little too familiar with young e-boys, just go to an open field, throw out a bunch of estrogen pills. A few should show up eventually. I'm going to skip giving any advice on courtship, mainly because we've been over that before, and knowing my audience, I'm sure you're all very charismatic, outgoing, find it very easy to talk to new people, so securing a date with one of these people should be a breeze for you. Now that you've located both potential candidates, it's time to take a look at all the relevant facts and come to an objective conclusion as to which is the superior choice. One great benefit of tomboys is that they'll never challenge your masculinity. Generally, if you date a woman, you have to do things that are unbecoming of a man such as drink tea or buy flowers, things that if you did while you were out with the homies would get you shunned for life. With a tomboy, however, it's just a constant loop of non-stop pure masculine energy between the two of you. On the other hand, femboys will challenge your masculinity, which may actually be a good thing. They'll teach you that you can still be a man and take care of yourself, an insane notion, but maybe not incorrect. 
Maybe there is more to skincare than wiping your face with the same hand towel you use for your cock and balls. Maybe coconut oil is the wonder cure for all that ails you. Put it on your skin. Put it in your hair. Put it in your coffee. Put it in your eyes. Everyone else who swears by it seems to have their life together. Tomboys will drag you to the gym, which is good. A healthy body is the foundation of a healthy life. And working out is much more enjoyable when you have others there to go absolutely fucking ape mode with. Don't worry if you don't know what to do. Just follow her lead, do 20 sets of squats and hip thrusts, you'll have an absolute dump truck of an ass in no time. Femboys are too timid to drag you anywhere. So if you're happy and set in your current lifestyle, they may be more your speed. Tomboys are good if you need someone to carry you in League or Valorant or whatever shit video game you play. And they're very likely willing to carry you in real life. Bonus. Femboys, however, generally play a more supportive role. Studies have shown that having someone consistently tell you that you are good at a video game and that your penis is quite large improves your performance by up to 30%. If you're more of a politically ignorant mindset, a tomboy might be more manageable for you. The vast majority of tomboys are centrist and just kind of roll with what feels right. Femboys, however, are always, without fail, either anarcho-communist or full-on fascist, no in-between, no exceptions. They have a lot of opinions and you're gonna have to listen to them. So, a femboy would be the preferred choice for a J-Reg fan. And really, this doesn't need to be said. I'm confident if you have any self-respect, this is a make-or-break factor when it comes to relationships. Both tomboys and femboys bump Lil B every fucking day. Thank you, based god! <sighs> okay, this is tougher than I thought. There's a lot of information to sift through here. Let's simplify this to a singular point that we can agree on matters the most. Tomboys make superior fighting game characters. Therefore, they are better. I mean, come on. What do you want from me? It just is what it is. Let's look at the facts. Asuka Kazama, Videl Satan, Sakura Kasu... Kasuga... Kasu, Sakura Street Fighter, Naoto Persona, Makoto Street Fighter, Makoto Persona, whenever Persona 5 Arena comes out, Frost, who is not only a tomboy, but also a hype transhumanist. Let's fucking go! Jita Grand Blue. You might be thinking, she's not a tomboy, she's wearing a pink skirt. Let me take some measurements here. Mmm... Mm-hmm, okay, yep, I'm calling it. Tomboy. Who do femboys even have in this category that can compete? Huh? Bridget? Really? Guilty Gear. Fuck Guilty Gear, alright? I'm just like everyone else who hates Guilty Gear. I've never played it. So there you have it. Tomboys are the superior choice. I've settled this debate. Now everyone can shut the fuck up, please, about it. No one cares. Shut up. Shut up. No one gives a shit. Ooh, I want strong tomboy GF to soft dom me. Ooh, I want soft femboy BF with tight bussy. Bro, I don't care. No one cares. Get help. Talk to someone. Form a real human connection with someone for once in your life. Drop the seven layers of irony and just talk like a real human being. Please. I'm begging you. It doesn't have to be like this. I promise. And now a word from some of my patrons. Agrippa to Ripa. Kawase, kawase, kawase. And nine. Everyone here is all, I need tomboy GF, or I need femboy BF, and I'm just over here like, I'm addicted to crack. Hayek the Freedman. Gather around, for I shall tell you the story of the misinformed Discord server, a place reserved for only the worst of Satan's rejects. For you see, long ago the world was being devoured by cringe. The base god in his wisdom and mercy decided to try and alleviate the world of the apocalyptic levels of cringe, but since cringe cannot be destroyed, Lil B devised a plan to contain it, and in the long forgotten year of like... 2018 or 2019? I'm not sure, I don't remember. I'm not gonna look it up, fuck you. Anyways, the base got someone his most loyal and cringy follower, a Canadian incel named Misinformed, and Lil B said to Misinformed, Yo, Diet Drake, can you like, create a space where all the worst fucking losers and simps can release all their cringe to save the rest of us? And Misinformed said, Anything for you, based god, and to show my appreciation, I will cut off and gift you my penis, because let's face it, I was never gonna use it for much anyways. And Lil B said, Please don't, N not much of an offering anyway. And so the Canadian incel with a small penis created the Misinformed Discord server, where those doomed to eternal damnation and virginity would release all their cringe, and today it is filled with the rejects that even the biggest losers on the planet cast away. Like you and I. Thank you, based god. Knuckles. Only thing a femboy and tomboy got in common is their small ass tits and sucking mean dick. Christian Gay. If a girl has a boyfriend and he can't bench over 135, she's single. We need to go back to the days where femboys could be beaten and the world knew peace and harmony. Connor. We all know the real answer to this debate is body pillow with a vacuum. Magnum. Stay safe, guys. Horny alien guy. I ain't got no type. Big titty wholesome GF is the only thing I like. Lord huge knot. Tomboy GF versus Femboy BF is an irrelevant debate. Why can't you have both? This message has been brought to you by the Mick P Pants Foundation. Thank you, base spider god. Mayor Mike. Tomboy GF or Femboy BF? Doesn't matter. A hole's a hole. 
playing the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim Special Edition. Have you ever wished for a tomboy MILF? Congrats, since they do exist. It's called a soccer mom. In other words, a Karen. How do you feel now, boy? Inside Yavla Bra Ella here. Halb was guten Haaren Pistol mat mit Ruvud. Bro, what? <laughs> Puppy. Tomboy, femboy, I just want someone who looks like the mask. Raymond. The only true answer to this is clear. You need a significant other that can do both. Asshole tomboy and delicate femboy. A true boy, if you will. Uncrowned trickster. Your uncle looks like your dad. And wholesome. Fuck the police. Thank <laughs> you.